Hey bookers, hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video with me, Jessica Leo. I hope you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, please do. Also, don't forget to like the videos. Really, really important. That helps me out so, so much. And also click that notification bell so that you know each and every single time I upload, baby so so important please please do thank you so much for you being here and thank you so much for all the support that you have shown my channel over the years months however long that you've been here you've been here a week i see you girl i see you okay thank you so much for being here i appreciate all of you and in this time around we're going to be having some fun okay we're going to be having some fun um i am going to be doing the anti-tbr tag and this is pretty much a tag that surrounds just books that you'll never read books that you're just like um, I mean I don't know I don't feel like it so a lot of the time the books that I'm going to be talking about are books that I do not have in my possession except I think the last question I do have the books in my possession I've got them sitting right here and I'm going to show them to you but let's get into the anti TBR tag so I'm going to be looking at the questions on my phone because that it's that it's that is where they are, my baby, my darling. That is where they are, honey. So let's take into consideration one thing and one thing only, okay? My mind about certain books that are going to be listed in this particular video might change. My mind not might not change. It is what it is. At the end of the day, it is what it is. I, I, <laughs> sweetie, I can't do anything about it. All right. But um, right now, currently at this point, these are the books that I'm going to be sharing with you. Books that are so popular. Books that are well loved and all of that. But books that I just do not see myself reading. Okay. A popular book everyone loves that you have no interest in reading. The first book is one that I have with me, okay? And this is Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. And the reason is I just, I didn't go well with normal people. I didn't go well with the writing style. Um, I just felt that Marianne and uh, Connell were insufferable. I just felt like, just talk about stuff. Like, I really don't get it. But at the same time, maybe that's just millennial behavior. Maybe that's millennial culture. I don't know what it is, but I found them insufferable. And I didn't like um, the writing, the grammar, the no quotation marks and all of that. I just didn't get on with Sally Rooney's writing. And I've got normal people right there and I can tell you for free, that's a book that I'm going to unhaul, sweetie. Okay, well, that's the last question, but neither here nor there. Um, the next book that I didn't even bother picking up and it is such a craze book, like everybody seems to love this book is, the Spanish Love Deception. Now, I read romance. I don't read romance all the time. I'm not too crazy about romance. I prefer literary fiction. I prefer thrillers, horrors, and all of that. A little bit of nonfiction, but mostly collections, anthologies, and things like that. But the Spanish Love Deception, I have heard <laughs> so much stuff and negative stuff about this book that I just don't feel the need to even pick it up. There are so many people who love it, but I hear a lot, I heard a lot and read a lot about the grammar and um, how often they talk about his blue eyes and it's about this um, Spanish uh, woman who goes and attends a wedding and now the family doesn't know that she's broken up with her boyfriend and then she forces a colleague of hers to join her on this um trip uh for this wedding uh you know with her to spain or wherever it is that they're going and um it's like a love hate trope <sighs> yeah hate to love trope yeah hate to love trope Nothing about it seems interesting. It seems like it's too long. I was actually even surprised that for a romance novel, it seems quite thick, it seems quite long. And I was just like, nah, it's not something I don't see. I see myself picking up. I really don't see myself picking that book up. So, hey ho. Hey -ho. A classic book or author you don't have an interest in reading. <sighs> 
Okay, okay. Honestly, Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens, um, um, I can't really think of, also just really the big, uh, I said Emily Bronte as well. There's just quite a few. I'm just really not that big on classics and I don't feel like I'm in a, you know, I feel like if I was an English major or something and I was really, really into literature and whatever, I would rather read contemporary literature, honestly. Um, so a lot of classical authors, I really just wouldn't gravitate towards. Um, I would read more rather modern classic authors like Toni Morrison, uh, like um, Donna Tartt, who's also been now you know, waned into the space of modern classics. Um, Lord of the Flies. The author of Lord of the Flies. I forgot his name. And I've got the book right there. I just can't see it. The author of Lord of the Flies. That kind of thing. Modern classics, absolutely. But classic classics, I'm not crazy over. And I'm quite, quite okay with not reading them, really. An author whose books you have no interest in reading. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to tell it as it is. I'm going to be very, very honest. I'm going to be very, <laughs> very, very, very honest. Okay. So we have Marianne Keys. Marianne Keys is a very big author who writes fiction novels, adult contemporary fiction novels. I, she's got so many She's got so many, I'm not keen on reading even one. Then we have Sophie Kinsella. Sophie Kinsella does a lot of, you know, Confessions of a Shopaholic. Sophie Kinsella does a lot of romance novels. Oh my gosh, she's got so many. So they do novels like serialized fiction. So you have stories following a certain character and then there's the multiple novels following that particular character. So they do serialized fiction, but they also do standalone fiction novels. Not interested. Marianne Keys, uh, we also have, and don't, don't shoot me for this. I'm actually reading my answers. Don't shoot me for this, but we also have Stephen King. I, I know Mbali, my friend, would literally have my neck. My mother loved Stephen King. My mother was such a big fan of, um, what's, the, what's this one? Misery. She was such a big fan of Misery and she was also a big fan of Pet Cemetery. My mother loved Stephen King. I, on the other hand, not keen on it. Um, James Patterson, Lucinda Riley, Riley uh, Jodie Picoult. So these are the authors that have been around for so long and have got so many bestsellers under their belts. I just don't care to read any of their books. A problematic uh, author you have no interest in reading. Tolkien, anyone? J.R. Tolkien, come on. Um, so, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Hobbit. There's been so many, you guys can actually Google J.R. Tolkien and you will see so many of the problematic statements that he's made, so many of the problematic things that have popped up and shown up in his books. And I feel like one of the other um, authors, why I don't want to read Stephen King is many of his older books had the N word in them and Stephen King is a white author. At this point, I just feel like I'm not gonna read your books. I'm really not gonna read your books. So J.R. Tolkien, Stephen author, uh, Stephen, author <laughs> Stephen King, and uh, oh my gosh, okay, uh, Delia Owens. So I've already read Where the Crawdads Sing, and I read it before the controversy surrounding Delia Owens came out. So if you remember the storyline of Where the Crawdads Sing, it follows a girl by the name of Kaya, and Kaya grows up in the marshlands uh, close to the town where, you know, the, the small town where... Um, uh, the other members of the community live. She just lives in the marshlands and she fishes for food and this and that and the other um, and her family are quite poor and at some point each and every single one of her family members leaves her until she's left alone there. The book is set in two time spans. I'll put a picture of the book here and it is it has also been adapted. It's sort of like a mystery novel and also has been adapted into a uh, movie which is currently on circuit now and I wanted to watch that movie until I heard about the controversy surrounding Delia Owens 
and um, that mystery is pretty much a murder happens and Kaya is a suspect in this murder and when I read about Delia Owens and how her life, her storyline, her life is actually so close to the storyline of Kaya's in the sense that there is a country, there is a country in the world where Delia Owens and her family cannot go to because if they go there, they're going to be questioned with regards to a murder. And I was just like, what? <laughs> what do you even mean, bro? Well, so and then lastly is also James Patterson. Now, if you don't follow writing news or anything like that, uh, you won't know that James Patterson, a very well-known billionaire author, okay, well, well known, uh, has written many, many serialized novels, many, many books, um, came out last year and said, white authors, white male authors have it harder than any other authors ever, any other nationality, race, whatever. And I was just like, sir, what? After that, I was just like, I, I, net for the day, I'm never going to pick up your books. You can catch me outside. I'm not going to support that. So I won't. I won't. The next uh, one is an author you've read a couple of books from and decided that their books are not for you. I read Sally Rooney's Normal People and I decided from there that I am not about to read her books. Okay, so I've read Sally Rooney's Normal People and I decided from there that her books are just definitely not for me. I don't see myself reading her books going forward. And um, Daniel Steele. So I've read a couple of books, I think three books or so from Daniel Steele. My mother loved Daniel Steele, but I just feel like her books are just typically not for me. I'm quite comfortable not reading Daniel Steele moving forward. I'm quite all right with it. It is what it is. I'm not her target market, really am not. Um, but I'm not saying that her books are not great or anything like that, but they're just not for me. And that's that on that. So the next one is a genre that I tried getting into, uh, have no interest in, tried getting into, but couldn't, and it's sci-fi. Okay, I'm literally slowly trying to get my way into fantasy, and I'm kind of getting there. I'm kind of enjoying it a little by little, but sci-fi, and as much as the storyline seems intriguing, I just don't, I can't find it anywhere in me to actually pick up those books. So... Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm just not into sci-fi. Sci-fi is not my jam. It's not my thing. It is what it is. So, a book I've bought, but I don't think I'll ever read. That's the next question. They both die at the end. I really don't see myself reading. This is such a well-loved, famous book. So well-known. So many people love it. But it is a YA novel. Um, and I just, I get it. Like the storyline seems really great. We follow Ruiz and Mateo and Mateo find out one night that they only have one more day to live and they end up spending that one day before they mm -hmm. uh, pass on together and they have a great time. So on, on the end day. Right. And, um, yeah, I just... I've had it for so long and I've never, I keep on passing right through it. Every single time I look at my shelves, trying to pick up a book to read, I'm just like, mm, mm, mm. so I really don't see myself reading this book. And this book is so well loved. So, so well loved, but just not for me, I guess. Mm. A series that I have no interest in reading. I, basically, in a nutshell, all the serialized fictions from your Lucinda Riley's, your Marion Keys, your uh, Pattersons, all these big authors that every single time you go into the bookstores, their books are on the forefront, like your Wilbur Smiths and all of that. I just... And someone who apparently writes really, really great thrillers is John Grisham. I haven't even read one book from John Grisham, and I don't feel like I ever will. I just have no interest in reading books from these authors. Um, their book covers don't intrigue me. They don't excite me in any way. Their storylines for some of the books sound really, really intriguing and exciting. But for the most part, 
<laughs> I just don't see myself picking up their books. It'd be like that sometimes. It is what it is, okay? It is what it then is. The last one is a new release that you have no interest in reading. Honestly, the books that I have no interest in reading that are new releases, I just don't even bother finding out more it on. So all the new releases that I have my eye on, I'm interested in reading. So I really can't really answer this last question. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the the anti tbr tag book lovers and if you did please like and subscribe join the channel also click the notification bell if you did enjoy this video and like the video and i'll see you in the next video ah wow like the video this video next video 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 i'll see you in the next one bye